Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Anne Fong. I'm a fine art artist. Uh, you know the difference between fine art artists and commercial artists? Commercial artists, they share the same artistic, but they work with the customer. So when a customer comes to you and they tell you they want something, you do it. You say, okay, the, the red color go with your design, but they say, I don't like red. You have to change it, right? But I'm a fine artist, so if I use red, if they don't like my painting, I say, okay, don't like it, go away. <laughs> That's why I have the kids. If not, I won't make any money. <laughs> um, when, when I get invited to this event by Common Ground, and they thought about a rebuild, I said, oh my God, that's my life. So I'm happy to be here today. Um, first of all, I would like to say thank you to America, because America, I get my human right, I get my women right. Because I think back when I was born in Vietnam, when I was a little girl, and every time I see something I, I didn't like, I question. So my mom tell me, you talk too much, nobody's going to marry you. <laughs> I'm glad I'm in America, so yes, I'm okay. <laughs> yes, and then when I was in high school, that's the time for the Vietnam War. Um, every night, the police went through every house to check, to get all the mail out. To, they drive them to the army. So there's one time when I was about 14, 15 years old, I went to my uncle's house for overnight, for summertime. And then the police came to that house, but I wasn't in that family, so I, my name wasn't in that family. So they asked my uncle, my uncle had to bribe them with the money. That's before 1975. So I talked back, I said, I just came to visit my uncle, so what's wrong with it? They put me in jail. Yes, and the thing is, when I was in jail, I sat with three more women and they opposed it too. Because those, those hookers, they, they don't have uh, paperwork, anything. So I sat with them, but at first I didn't know anything. I looked up, oh my God, I'm the youngest one in four of us. Then, so I look back, there's a lot of things going on that tied me down. So after 1975, when the communists took over the country, uh, we, we lost our freedom in South Vietnam. And at that time, my parents never thought about escaping. They said, oh, we, we are not rich, we are not powerful people, so we're okay to stay, so we stay. So when I finished my high school in 1977, I tried to apply to the fine art graduate school in Vietnam. There's only one art school in the whole South Vietnam, that's Cao Dang Bi Tok I couldn't get in because I wasn't a Communist Party member. So the whole year, I didn't know what to do. I rode my bicycle around the whole Saigon, the called Ho Chi Minh City. Drawing around every day in the morning until at night went home. Every day, I didn't know, I had no more direction. I had no more goal. I didn't know where to go. There's no university except me. But at that time, I look around, I wasn't the only one. The whole street on South Vietnam, people slept on the street because their house get confiscated. So they have no house, no money, nothing. And I look around, this is the life of us in South Vietnam. So the second years, I try again to the, the art school. I didn't get accepted either because I wasn't a Communist Party member either. But I was changing my direction. So I applied to the um, teaching credential, I got in. So I was a high school teacher. And I was so young, so students love me. So when I become a high school teacher, one of my students took me to escape. And I got it. So I'm in America right now. So thank God I'm here. So when I look back because of that, you know, like the first generation immigrant, I'm one of the first generation, right? So when everybody came to America, they thought about making money. So all the young people, what they study? Medical, dental, pharmaceutical. Here I am, I study fine art in America, but I love it. Because in fine art, it gives me some power, not many people has it. So when I was in my graduate program, I searched in university to uh, the library to see anything belong to Vietnam that I can use for my, uh, for my uh, master thesis. Whatever I found was so disgusting, because I look back, I see all those bold people images in the uh, bit, um, library books. And I said, no, that's not how the bold people look like. Because I, I'm one of the bold people. When I escaped Vietnam, I, I, I didn't go on vacation. I couldn't wear jewelry. I didn't do any of those. So I had to dress myself to very low, low, low that people cannot uh, spot me out from when I escaped. So when I was in the refugee camp, I looked so bad. But, but the, the thing is, the courage of us when we escape, that's the beauty. So I turned around. I used that in my fine art work. So every piece of my painting, I talk about Vietnam, I talk about me, 
the bold people. So I use this. I make my painting become pretty unique until today. So this is how I rebuild myself. At the same time, I rebuild it for my own community. How people look at us as the bold people, the first immigrant come to America, just like Mayflower people, but they didn't get teased, but we did. So during my time, I watch TV. Every second when someone shoot someone, they put the Vietnamese gang on TV right away. But if, if anybody do any good thing, you never be on TV. But I say, okay, then I show the other side that we did good. So I use it in my fine art. So in my work, for example, some of my pieces like this one right here, I talk about run, how we run out from our culture from one side of the Pacific Ocean to the other side. So the title is Run. And then when I use a bow in my painting, I talk about the bow people. So this is one of the early paintings that I talk about the bow people, um, how we get out. And, and then I find out uh, bow people is a, is a woman too. If any lady never get married, they cause the lady didn't get a, uh, didn't anchor down to the harbor. You know, twin chuka burn. Yeah. So I look at okay, okay. I let the boat go free. So in this painting, I just have the boat, but the boat go free. We don't even need a harbor in our painting. So a lot of my painting, I use something that pretty honest to myself. Cause when I study in American art school, what what did we learn? We learned Jackson Pollock. We learned Picasso. We learned the Four Ninja Turtle in the uh, in the old time, the Michelangelo. <laughs> but we are not. Them. We are ourselves in the 21st century. So how I use it, I put in my painting. That's how I look at it. So every of my painting, I carry my culture, my past, and I rebuild on top of it how to glorify our culture. And I look at it so I can feel proud of myself. So I hope the next generation, when they see it, they can feel proud of themselves too. Um, this, this is most of these paintings are in the collector's hand. And some of them are so big, so I couldn't bring them over here for one night. So I use it in here. And when I was in my um, undergrad, I was deputy team, timid. I couldn't speak English well. Came to America, I was in the ASL, English as a second language school. So at that time, some of my schoolmates in fine art, and he made a statement, uh, woman, can I do big painting? Because they always carry little things like baby. Oh my God, that pissed me off. <laughs> that night, I went to Home Depot. I bought wood, 10 feet by 10 feet. I built big canvas. And then he shut up. He cannot say anything from that time on. <laughs> so these are big painting. We talk about 7 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet painting right here. Because of that, it gives me confidence. So I can tell myself, if I want to go big, I can paint big. If I want to do a little one, I still can do little painting. So that, there's nothing can tie me down. So when you go through all this painting, I see it myself at the same time. It gives me confidence as an artist. So like this one, I talk about childhood, uh, how we hang ourselves in our life. Um, so from here, I, I use it as a statement in my work. Could we keep going? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, this one I named it today and yesterday. This is a seven feet painting and it's, it, it's so already. Um, I used the woman in the past, we can all laugh. At the same time, the contemporary woman, but she's still transparent because she's transforming herself. This painting is done in 1993, so by now she becomes solid. So it's not transparent anymore. Oh. <laughs> um, so like every piece of my work, I, I start with something pretty honest to myself in my heart, how I feel it, and I use it. And the painting at the, uh, the other wall over there, I talk about how I crossed the Pacific Ocean, the blue one over there, and name it, I named it Group Hug. Because no matter how you live in America, every time you receive a letter from home, they ask for money. <laughs> so that's how we hug them, use our money. We hug all the way past the Pacific Ocean to Vietnam. So that painting, I open the door, all the salt water come out from that painting. So, so what I mean is a lot of subject matter Instead of looking for something pretty high, I look back to my own life and I use it. So, so when you look at my painting, maybe you can relate it to yourself because we look back, we're in America right now. We have a lot of freedom, but at the same time, when you get out from Orange County, if you go somewhere else, if they see your black hair, they still ask you where you're from. Because they don't consider you as American. This is how I get for myself. Uh, what, for a week from today, I will exhibit my work in Thailand. And this is my second time, because the first time I went, 
And I told them I'm American artist. They said, no, no, where are you from? I said, yeah, California. They said, no, no, where are you from? I said, oh, okay, I'm from Vietnam. I said, okay, oh, they get it. So no matter where we go, how high we go up in society, they still look at you as a Vietnamese American. I think that's enough, huh? Thank you. Okay. <laughs>